Um, it is a pleasure to be here today. Um, my name is, is Bill White. I am a senior research consultant at an organization called Chestnut Health Systems. Uh, most of their treatment services are in the state of Illinois. I started the research division of that organization in 1986. Uh, we have about 90 full-time staff in the research division now, and all we do is study treatment outcome. And we've been doing that since 1986. So we do these long-term follow-up studies of tracking people, five, 10. We've got actually a cohort of people I will describe to you today we're actually 13 years out in terms of our follow-up studies. So we're, we're actually beginning for the first time to construct a science-based understanding of what happens with long-term recovery and what happens when people leave addiction treatment. Not in the first 90 days or the first six months, but really what happens to their life over time. And we're gonna illustrate that quite a bit. I'm going to wear a lot of hats today. I'm going to, at times, sound like a country preacher, and when I do, I'm speaking as a recovery advocate and a person in long-term recovery. There are times I'm gonna sound like a, a, a stuffy researcher, and I'm gonna be flashing graphs and numbers at you, and that's when I'm gonna have my sort of research scientist hat on, as, particularly as a person who studies recovery from the standpoint of science. I'm also gonna talk about a person who's had a wonderful opportunities to work with pioneer sites that are trying to fundamentally redesign addiction treatment in the United States. I've done a lot of work in the state of Connecticut, done a lot of work in the city of Philadelphia, and you're gonna hear more about Philadelphia tomorrow when Dr. Achara speaks about the work we have done together there, transforming their behavioral health care systems in that city. So we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna do a lot of roles. We're gonna to try to do two major things by way of my day today. And I want to distinguish a little bit about what we're doing today as opposed to how we will kind of shift gears tomorrow. What we're going to do today is give you a kind of crash course this morning in sort of the big picture of what's unfolding out there in the world of addiction treatment and recovery. What is this so-called recovery revolution? What is this recovery thing about? What is recovery management? What do you, what do you mean recovery-oriented systems of care? We've always been recovery focused, right? And, and we hear some of that a lot. We're gonna to try to give you kind of the, some of the nuts and bolts that led up to what is going, what by the end of the day, I assure you, you will understand, is a fundamental transformation of addiction treatment as we have known it in the United States. As a historian, I'm going to suggest to you that the future of addiction treatment and recovery hinges on whether we are successful at that transformation. And that vote isn't in yet, are you with me? Because what I wanna tell you as a historian of this field is the acute care model of addiction treatment in the United States, as we have evolved it over 40 years, is politically and scientifically not sustainable. Did everybody hear me? As a, as a cultural institution, addiction treatment is on probation. We, we simply became an alternative to the revolving doors of jails and drunk tanks and emergency rooms of general hospitals. And we promised them we would end that revolving door. And we had great promises of what we would do by way of recovery. And we have done some amazing things, agreed? We have people whose lives have been absolutely transformed through this thing we call addiction treatment. We have people who don't have enough words in their language to express the gratitude of what addiction treatment has meant for them and their families. But we are going to do, particularly early this afternoon, a fearless and searching moral inventory of addiction treatment as a system of care, looking at performance data. And what I'm gonna tell you is with that performance data, compared to what we promised the community in this country we can do with addiction treatment. The gap is so great, it is unsustainable. How long do you think it will be, or are we already at a point where almost everyone in this country knows someone for whom addiction treatment did not work? What do you think of family who's about to readmit their addicted family member for the fifth time feels when they hear the slogan, treatment works? What do you think a family hears 
when they hear the slogan, Treatment Works, who buried their child from an overdose after four very expensive episodes of what they were told was the best addiction treatment in the country. We're going to talk about addiction treatment works. It has effects. But what we're going to talk about is this simple point. We are putting people in interventions in the United States whose problem severity and complexity is so great, whose recovery capital is so low, we're putting them in interventions so brief, so, so weak, it has little probability of success. And when they fail, what do we do with them? We punish them because we say he or she had their chance. As family members, we divorce them. We extrude them from our households. We send them to prison. We fire them from our places of employment. We take their babies from them because they had their chance. And what I'm going to argue with you throughout the day is that was not a chance. That was a setup. That was not a personal failure. That was a systems failure. Are you with me? Okay. Let's get going. Thank you.